is the third video in the gas exchange uh, series. Uh, we're looking at the uh, gas exchange and insects in this video. Um, uh, what we're going to cover really is the structure of the um, uh, tracheal system of the insect, um, uh, including its spiracles, um, and then really discuss um, how uh, the insect ventilates its tracheal system. Okay. Um, then at the end we'll have a look at a question just to try and get everything knitted together and see if you can relate uh, the theory there to the uh, exam questions. So first off then I've got a number of diagrams here that uh, summarise really the tracheal system. Um, all this system is really is a, is a network of uh, tubes uh, that run from the surface of the insect right into the uh, tissues and the cells of the insect. Um, what we've got to mention first off really is um, the uh, insect has an exoskeleton made of um, uh, chitin um, and that exoskeleton is totally impermeable uh, to gases. So in order to get air and gases into this tracheal system, it does need um, a series of uh, little holes which are on the surface of the animal. Um, and these holes are called spiracles. And in diagram number one here, you can see the spiracles on the surface of the uh, insect. And then we have a, a kind of a magnified view of one spiracle. Okay. Um, if we look at diagram uh, two, this is a, a microscope image now of a, of a real spiracle. And uh, in diagram A, you can see that um, these spiracles are not just simple holes within the exoskeleton. Uh, they're quite complex structures. And in this diagram, you've got these little spiky things, which are hairs and uh, they're there to trap uh, any water vapour uh, and to prevent any sort of loss of water from the insect. Uh, part B in diagram 2, you can see in this diagram the spiracle is actually closed and that's quite important because uh, the spiracle doesn't remain open all of the time. It actually spends quite a lot of time closed and again this is to actually prevent water loss from the insect. Okay, so so in addition to the hairs, it also closes uh, to prevent uh, water loss. Um, diagram number three, then. Um, this is a, a, a general diagram of the tracheal system of an insect. You can see here uh, the spiracle, which is on the uh, surface of the animal. And connected to that spiracle are these uh, network of tubes, which collectively is called the tracheal system. Um, the first tube here, though, which is normally the widest part, um, is called the trachea. And that can uh, subdivide into these uh, smaller, finer tubes, uh, which terminate or end in the cells of the insect. So these... Um, finer tubes are called the tracheoles and interestingly with with regard to the tracheoles right right on the end of these tracheoles the point that they the point at which they enter the the tissues of the animal that that actually represents the true gas exchange surface uh, of the tracheal system um, just to show you um, sort of my representation of the uh, tracheal system in diagram number four here. Um, again, I've got a spiracle which is on the body surface. That spiracle is connected to the trachea, which is supported by chitin or rings of chitin. And that trachea splits then into many, many tracheoles. Uh, and each tracheole will terminate or end in a body cell uh, of the insect and this is where gas exchange is going to occur right down on the ends of these tracheoles uh, so that part there represents the gas exchange surface and I think it'd be important that you make a note of that actually okay um, so basically then what uh, what happens is once the uh, spiracle is open uh, air can enter this tracheal system and uh, the air will travel right down to the, the ends of the tracheoles 
and once that happens you do then get gas exchange so if we look at this second uh, tracheal or this third tracheal sorry uh, you'll get oxygen diffusing into the cells of the insect there and uh, once the oxygen has been used in respiration you'll actually get the carbon dioxide uh, leaving the tracheal sorry leaving the cell and entering the uh, tracheal so this is where all the gas exchange occurs uh, in the insect now uh, once the carbon dioxide um, starts accumulating in these tracheal systems um, the spiracle will open and actually the air then will be uh, expelled from the tracheal system um, and it's this air movement in and out that I want to concentrate on really uh, because the insect does carry out ventilation movements um, which aid in the movement of air in and out of the tracheal system so that's what we're going to come on to uh, in a moment but um, the gas exchange part as I've mentioned occurs down here uh, right at the ends of the tracheoles okay if we uh, we're going to move on to the next slide and uh, the next slide has um, a graph on it which summarizes um, the ventilation movements as well as uh, looking at the changes in carbon dioxide and oxygen levels in the tracheal system and also it takes into account the opening and closing of the spiracles because uh, I said earlier they don't remain open all of the time so here's uh, here's the graph um, if we just um, zoom in on that a little bit uh, if I can get the right button okay so I've zoomed in onto the graph now and we're we're going to take a little look at all the lines and curves on this graph um, I initially really want to start down um, the bottom here uh, where I've labeled the line volume that volume actually relates to the volume of the tracheal system and um, as you can see from from the graph you, you you've got sometimes the the volume is is high uh, that's where we have a peak okay so you've got a, a large or high volume there that can then change to a low volume uh, and then it alternates again it goes back to a, a high volume then a low volume and then back up to a high volume so these um, or this alteration or alternation sorry in um, volume uh, actually represents uh, the um, ventilation mechanism uh, within the insect uh, because as the insect ventilates its um, tracheal system it does actually change the volume of the uh, tracheal system um, before I explain how this volume changes, I do want to point out about the, the terms here about high pressure and low pressure. It's quite important to remember that uh, when you have um, a large volume, okay, the pressure within the tracheal system is low. Uh, it's this um, uh, relationship I've spoken about before between volume and pressure. Uh, when the volume is high the pressure is low okay and uh, opposite to that then when the volume is low down here uh, the pressure is high so this bottom graph is actually showing uh, the ventilation movements and I just want to use a couple of other diagrams to uh, explain what's happening uh, on that part of the graph okay so if we have a look at these diagrams here now that I've zoomed in on uh, diagram number one um, what I'm showing you is a rectangle there which which is a basic representation of the uh, tracheal system um, here I've said that there's a low volume and as a consequence of that we have a high pressure so what's happening is the spiracles are open and as the volume uh, reduces the pressure increases and that actually forces air out of the tracheal system uh, 
Now, how does the insect uh, change the volume of these tracheal systems? Well, it's to do with muscular contractions, really, of its body. Uh, normally the abdomen so what the insect can do is actually contract muscles which actually squash or reduce the sort of diameter or the width really of the abdomen um, so the abdomen um, reduces in size from top to bottom and that what uh, that's what causes the reduction in the volume so these blue arrows I've just drawn on represent sort of the movement of the abdomen inwards so it's squashing in um, and that's what causes the low volume and the high pressure. If we look at uh, the second diagram here, number two, um, what's happening here is the exact opposite. Uh, we have a large volume and hence a low pressure and the spiracles are open again and this now allows air to actually move into the tracheal system. Um, because uh, the volume is a lot, lo a lot larger and the pressure is low, so air can be kind of sucked in uh, through the open spiracle. And what the insect is doing here is actually relaxing its abdominal muscles and the abdomen then can actually expand a little bit and that increases the volume within the tracheal system. So how does these uh, how do these two diagrams then relate uh, to my graph? Well, if we look at the diagram number one with the low volume, um, that will ultimately relate. Um, if I scroll over a little bit, that diagram here uh, will relate to that part of the graph. Okay, here uh, where you've got your low volume and uh, your high pressure and the other diagram okay uh, will relate uh, to this part of the graph where you have the um, high volume and low pressure okay uh, so I hope that's helped a little bit with the um, ventilation movements there and the volume changes and the pressure changes uh, within the uh, tracheal system uh, what we need to do now is actually look at the spiracle uh, movements and the changes in carbon dioxide and oxygen levels. Okay, so I've zoomed in onto the graph now and uh, I just want to talk initially really about the carbon dioxide and oxygen levels. Uh, if you look at the pink line there, that represents um, the oxygen concentrations within the tracheal system and underneath rep in green represents the changes in carbon dioxide concentration also within the tracheal system. So if we start off uh, on the far left here, um, as you can see um, there seems to be a reduction in oxygen levels. As those oxygen levels reduce at the same time in green you've got an increase in carbon dioxide levels. So what this is ultimately showing you is respiration occurring within the insect because as you should know oxygen is needed for respiration so that reduces and one of the products of respiration is carbon dioxide um, and that's why the green line um, increases. Now all of this is happening while the spiracle uh, is closed. So you can see here the spiracle is closed. So when the spiracle is closed, what's happening is you get an accumulation of carbon dioxide within the tracheal system because uh, if you remember the carbon dioxide will be diffusing out of the cells of the insect um, and entering the tracheal system. So this accumulation of carbon dioxide um, is actually the stimulus to cause the spiracle to open. So when the carbon dioxide level gets to a high level, what you can see at, at this point here is the spiracle will now open. Okay, so when the spiracle opens, you are going to get gas exchange occurring between the tracheal system and the surrounding atmosphere. All right, so um, what you can see happening, oops, 
what you can see happening is um, with the level of oxygen within the tracheal system um, that is increasing because oxygen will be entering the tracheal system when the spiracle is open okay and the level of carbon dioxide will reduce because carbon dioxide will be leaving the tracheal system via this open spiracle. Um, so really this part of the graph here that I've shown by this double arrowed line that represents the gases being exchanged between the atmosphere and the tracheal system. Okay, so the, the insect now has actually got a fresh load of oxygen within its tracheal system and has got rid of all its carbon dioxide. Okay, once that has happened, the tracheal, uh, sorry, the spiracle will close and the cycle repeats. Um, the insect will use the new oxygen for respiration. So this second uh, line here, the oxygen level will reduce and the carbon dioxide level will increase so here now again represents um, gas exchange occurring between the respiring cells of the insect and the um, tracheoles which is the gas exchange surface when that's happening again of course the uh, spiracles are closed so that i hope has related um the opening and closing of the spiracles and the level of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Um, one last thing uh, before we leave this graph and look at a question is actually to relate the opening and closing of the spiracles with the uh, changes in oxygen and carbon dioxide levels with lastly the ventilation movements which is down at the bottom here. So um, if we look at uh, point number one here, uh, what's happening is the volume then of the tracheal system is low and the pressure is high. So what's happening here is the spiracle is open. So the um, air within the tracheal system must be forced out of the spiracle. At this point here so this is why you can actually get all of the carbon dioxide leaving um, and you can get um, oxygen entering uh, the tracheal system okay um, what we're going to come on to shortly is a question that um, tests your knowledge on these ventilation movements and what the question introduces is the fact that there are two sets of spiracles um, within an insect. There's one set that occur on the thoracic region of the insect and the other region is to do with spiracles on the abdomen. And that's quite an important question because it does expand um, the knowledge and information you need um, beyond the graph that you're looking at now. Okay, so I think if we look at the question now and we can um, tackle how the insect uses these two sets of spiracles and hopefully you'll have a better understanding of how uh, these ventilation movements work and, and how air circulates through the um, tracheal system. Okay, so uh, this is the question now. It's from January uh, 2011. Um, so the, the question up here gives you some information about um, the insect and the, the diagram that's shown in the uh, question. Uh, I just want to highlight the diagram really and show you that there is a thoracic region here where there are spiracles and then there's the, the abdomen and there are also spiracles on this abdomen. And th this, is, this question, as I've said before, will allow us to understand in more detail um, what's happening in this graph that I've uh, just been through uh, and it'll expand on how air actually moves through the tracheal system. So um, if we scroll down we need to look at the uh, the graph in this question. Okay. 
So there's three graphs then that we need to look at and um, if I take you through them, the top graph is looking at uh, the thorax spiracles and whether they're open or closed. So it's using the same sort of um, uh, convention that I've used. Wherever you get this sort of peak region, uh, the spiracle is open. Okay, and when there's a sort of trough or flat region, the spiracle is closed. Okay, so you've got spiracles opening and closing on the thorax. Uh, the next diagram or graph shows the abdominal spiracles, and again, uh, they will open wherever there's a peak and close wherever there's a trough. Okay, and lastly, the graph shows abdominal shape and you can either have an expanded shape or a compressed shape. Now it's this abdominal shape that really um, I was showing on my graph where we had the volume uh, changes. So um, when uh, the abdominal shape is expanded uh, you get this um, little peak occurring. Um, so what the expanded shape means is you actually you're actually getting um, an increase in volume occurring uh, because the abdominal is expanding and getting bigger and that ultimately leads to a, a greater volume within the tracheal system uh, wherever you get a a flat line here or a trough uh, the abdomen is compressed so that means the volume is going to be low um, and hence the pressure is high so these three graphs um, in this question are really what I've shown on my graph, but I didn't didn't make the distinction between thoracic and abdominal spiracles. I was just showing you the general principle of how um, spiracles open and close. You get different levels of carbon dioxide and oxygen um, occurring, and you also get changes in volume of the um, tracheal system. So this, this, um, these three graphs allow us to understand a little bit more about how mo uh, water, sorry, how air moves through the tracheal system um, in reality. Okay, so um, let's start with the questions then and we can hopefully make some sense out of all of this. Uh, part A is asking you to compare the relationship between the movements of the thoracic spiracles and those in the abdomen. Um, so uh, the first thing to state really is if you look at the thoracic spiracle here, um, that spiracle seems to open before the abdominal spiracle. So you can see the thoracic one is open first and then a little bit later on the abdominal spiracle uh, will open. Uh, so that's one um, relationship that uh, you can um, state. Okay. The other relationship that you can state um, is um, as the thoracic spiracles open, the abdominal spiracles close. Okay, so you can clearly see that there. Uh, thoracic one is open, and as you go down, the abdominal uh, spiracle is closed. So this is quite an interesting um, part of the graph actually because it is really showing you that the thorax and abdominal spiracles alternate while one is open the other one is closed. Okay so that's quite an important thing to remember here and it also helps us to understand how air moves throughout the tracheal system. So I'm going to jot in the answer now to part A and then we're going to look at part B1 and 2. Okay, so there's the uh, the answer typed into part A. Um, if we move on to part B1, it's asking now, uh, describe using the graph how the change in shape of the abdomen is related to spiracle movements. And what they mean by movements is whether they're open or closed. Um, so... Be careful here, the examiner is not being specific about which spiracles he wants you to talk about, so that means you have to talk about both, and that means the abdominal and the thoracic spiracles. So we need to look at the um, 
change in abdominal shape. Um, so let's have a look at this region here where the abdomen is expanded. Okay, so when the ab uh, abdomen is expanded, um, it means that um, the volume has increased and therefore the pressure is low. As the um, abdomen is expanded, what you can see is, if I put an arrow up here, the actual spiracle is open. Okay, so that's quite interesting. I'll repeat it again. As the abdomen expands or its volume increases, it appears that the thoracic spiracles open. Okay. If we now look at um, when the abdominal shape is compressed, what we see, if we run a line up from here when it's compressed, go up to the thoracic spiracles and you can see they're closed. All right. Um, so all I've talked about at the moment is the thoracic spiracles in relation to what's happening with the abdomen. So I'm just going to repeat it again. If we look at the blue arrow, as the abdomen expands, the thoracic spiracles are open. But as the abdomen compresses, the thoracic spiracles close. All right. So hopefully you're following this, but we need to move on to look at what happens to the abdominal spiracles. OK, because we need to consider those. So let's look again when the abdomen is expanded. OK, and again, that means a large volume. What happens to the abdominal spiracles is that they are closed. OK, so at that point there where I put the red dot, they're shut. And that corresponds to when the abdomen is expanding. OK. If we look now at when the abdomen is compressed, that means a low volume and a high pressure. We can clearly see now that the abdominal spiracles are open. OK. So there's there's uh, quite a lot mentioned there. Um, you may want to rewind that video now and sort of re-listen to my explanation of this. Um, but what I've just stated is absolutely vital in understanding part B2. It's about how the uh, animal ventilates the tracheal system. So I'll type in the answer to B1 and then we'll look at B2. So I've added uh, the answer in there to part B1. Um, I think it would be quite useful if you do read that answer and make sure you're happy with what is happening to the spiracles in relation to what's happening with the uh, abdomen. OK, so part B2 then. Suggest how this ventilates the tracheal uh, system. Right, well... What's happening really is as the um, abdominal um, shape is expanded, um, that means that um, there's there's actually uh, air coming into the thoracic spiracles or through the thoracic spiracles. So air is entering through the thorax and that air is going to come down through the abdominal um, tracheals, okay, and when the abdomen compresses, it's going to force air out through the abdominal spiracles, okay. So basically, it comes in via the thorax and it leaves or comes out via the abdominal spiracles. So what this is creating is a one-way movement of air circulating through the tracheal system. Okay, um, And that's why you have to consider thoracic spiracles as well as abdominal spiracles um, because uh, they allow this one-way movement of air uh, through the tracheal system, which is ultimately sort of uh, forced or allowed to happen via the abdominal shape. Okay, um, so in through the thorax, 
out through the uh, abdomen and that ensures more efficient uh, movement of air via the tracheal system. Okay, so I've entered the answer there for part um, B2. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, again, if you're not quite following what I'm saying, it may be worth um, stopping the video, re rewinding it a little bit and listening to it again. And hopefully you can understand how all of this uh, works together. Um, the last part of this question, part C, is pretty straightforward. We have mentioned the answer to this earlier. Uh, it says the graph uh, shows there are long periods when the spiracles are closed. Explain why this is important for the insect survival. Uh, yeah, the spiracles do spend a lot of time closed and that allows um, or reduces the water loss uh, from the insect, uh, which I mentioned earlier. Okay, so that um, really ends this video on um, gas exchange in an insect. Uh, I hope things are making a little bit more sense on this topic.